Good morning, traders. Uh, welcome to the new week. Uh, I wish you all have a spiffing, pleasant week ahead. Lots of pips to be made. Um, and I hope you get a lot of them. Morning, Kay. Good morning, Ryan. Good morning, everybody. Have a good weekend, mate. Um, yeah, I had some folks over Friday on Saturday. So um, I'd say I'm still recovering. Yeah, yeah. I wish. Uh, Monday's always a bad day for me. I hate Mondays. Uh, I think the week should start on a Tuesday, but then the, probably the long weekend. I'd want the week to then start on a Wednesday. So uh, keep going. You want the, you want the week to last two days and the weekends to last five. Yeah, it's some uh, sometimes it's uh, like that, you know. And when uh, when I was younger, I could party for two or three days in a row and then uh, feel pretty okay the next. Now uh, two days in a row, and uh, I'm gonna need probably two days, two full days to recover. <laughs> Yeah, that's old age for you, mate. Old age for you. Uh, well, anyway, we've got, uh, hopefully we have a bit of a party this week as far as trading goes. It's not too busy a week on the data front. Um, just have a quick look at that. Um, not a lot out at all this week, as is often the case right after the NFP week. Obviously, we had a, a busy week of data, central banks the last couple of weeks. So a bit quiet this week. Um, Eurozone retail sales tomorrow. Um, got some Chinese data coming up on Wednesday, CPI and PPI numbers there. Um, speak a little bit on that in, in some of the headlines in a moment. Um, wholesale inventory is something just to keep an eye on there for the, for the retail market as well, or retail data, retail sales, um, just to see if, if inventories are affecting possible sales. You know, if there's a slowdown in spending, you tend to see inventories dipping back. Um, the big number really is going to be in the US on Thursday when we get uh, the newest CPI report, given everything that we've had from the Fed last week and, and particularly Powell and his uh, little hawkish tilt um, in terms of rates going potentially higher than the market's been expecting. Um, that's going to need to be backed up in this data. Um, as uh, you may recall, we've had three reports um, now of lower inflation numbers, headline inflation uh, on the trot, um, although we have seen the core numbers uh, up twice on the trot. Um, usually the core tends to lag. So if we get another, another negative headline CPI number, um, we should be potentially looking for the core to uh, turn around as well. But uh, that's going to be big data on Thursday. We uh, seem to be now jumping around from central banks to what the data is going to be doing. Um, can the Fed get as high as they want to go? Is, is Powell's new hawkishness justified? This is the data that will tell us that. Um, on Friday, get a um, bit of CPI data, monthly GDP numbers from the UK industrial production. Um, and then uh, the first uh, Michigan consumer sentiment, the flash number for the new month on Friday as well. So not a whole lot of data but uh, enough to keep us busy. And of course, we're in midterms, the US midterms orbit. Um, uh, I don't really have a clue what's going on over there with that um, or what the market impact's likely to be, um, save for the fact that um, the market doesn't like political uncertainty. Um, so if, if there's a good showing from, from Biden's party, um, maintaining the status quo, that's likely to keep markets uh, comforted um, but if there's any upsets then we could see some uh, moves going on but uh, we'll be talking a lot uh, about that no doubt this week and uh, I'm probably going to ask some advice of the guys uh, when we get on the face show later because um, I really don't know how it falls. You, you got any ideas of this midterm stuff Kay? Yeah um, and I think uh, starting Friday and, and, and this morning we have seen a little bit uh, what it may be to, um, to get a split government um, and, and there's a possibility of a lame duck presidency, right? Um, and, and that shouldn't be uh, that shouldn't be great for the for the dollar, as you say. Some uncertainty. Well, the uncertainty will be will lie in the fact that uh, Biden's uh, uh, every proposal, if the if the Republicans get uh, the House and the Senate, every proposal will be just shut down uh, yeah. at the uh, at the entrance door, and. Um, that's going to make uh, things uh, difficult to government, uh, put the packages in place, his famous uh, uh, packages that, he's, that he was uh, uh, still trying to put in place, uh, which partially got shut down by his own, uh, com uh, his own party. Um, so it's, um, it's going to be a difficult situation for him. And 
I've got the impression that that is what our early doors market was um, kind of trading this morning. Um, the the uncertainty going forward. Um, I, I've I've read a couple of uh, bank strategies on on what may happen, and I'm uh, glad to know that uh, they are completely split as well. So basically, <laughs> it, they don't have a clue either. Um, the, the the funny thing is that uh, some say that uh, if uh, if we get a gridlock, it should be really good for uh, for stocks. But then on the other hand, I'm not sure if uh, if investors really like uh, a gridlocked uh, government, especially not in the in the US. So uh, there's there's a bit of both sides of the uh, of the coin, uh, a bit of wild guesses as what may happen to um, to yields as well. Um, I'm rather I'd, I'd rather be in the camp of saying if you get a gridlock and if you get like less packages put in place that's less money to to for the treasury to have to fund um and it would uh, kind of weigh on uh, weigh on yields i'd say um it, it's also a bit counterproductive for getting the economy um uh, rocking and rolling and uh, i'd say it by by uh, per correlation it should be uh, it should be negative dollars and i reckon that's what we are seeing this morning um Bit of dollar selling, despite uh, the Chinese uh, uh, rejecting those uh, um, reopening plans and uh, maintaining their COVID zero. But we'll we'll have a chat about that a little later because there's there's a bit of stuff yeah going on there. right so there's, there's there's really a bit of strange stuff going on there. Um, the, yeah, it's a, it's a it's a bit of a washing machine at the moment. Um, in stuff, there's lots lots of things going on. Um, you know, we just come over the, come over the Fed hump come through the NFP data, which we'll talk about. Got this China stuff still rolling on, stuff in the UK. You know, it's just, uh, you know, all the central banks we've just had a big round of. We're coming into year end. It could be just one of these funky moments in time we we get in trading. Um, but we'll start in China. And yeah, we've had all these on-off rumors. Uh, again, we had another denial of all the stuff we got late last week. Um, saying that the, the COVID policy is here to stay, officials saying it's here to stay. We've even had the Security Times saying that financial regulators uh, should get involved in these some of these rumours uh, and should start punishing false reports because um, they are market moving. Um, that's, that's of no doubt, but that's obviously state media uh, rallying against the narrative um, of these COVID easing rumours. But the, the market is just not letting it go. Um, this is a bit like uh, this is a bit like the Fed pivoters. I'm, I'm calling them the COVID pivoters. Um, they won't let it go. They see that China, or they think that China is going to have to ease up at some point, um, and they're going to keep pushing this narrative. They're going to keep trying to trade it, um, and it's a similar theme. They try and trade it, it gets officially denied. Then something else pops up, they trade it, gets officially denied. Um, you know, you can see that in in uh, dollar one moves you know we were all looking uh, quite bearish on uh, friday and bang we gap up open um over the weekend or early sunday when we got those denials coming out over the weekend so it can be tradable um you know both myself and k-man we're happy to, to jump in and out if we catch a headline or something depending on which way it goes uh, you know china aren't a country that's gonna give up on their their way that easily um when they do and when if they do then we'll know about it um and then they'll give us good indication on that but for the moment we're just going to carry on you know playing between the goalposts and uh let the market do its pivot let the uh officials come out and deny it uh, until that changes then that's potentially some trading opportunities for us um looking at some of the data uh, overnight we had uh trade balance data where am i going here so a bit down in activity overall um trade balance dropping there to 85.15 billion um you know missing by 10 billion was slightly up on on last month though um but what's most interesting is exports went into the negative um they haven't been in negative since i think sometime in 2020 um and the fact that both numbers are negative shows what's happening in China, you know, at the, an overall drop in activity. And obviously we're hearing at the moment, there's more lockdowns coming in place, lockdowns being extended. 
um, Beijing also, you know, potentially uh, going towards lockdowns and restrictions there. So, you know, there are still problems with COVID over there. Um, I think it was the highest number of cases in six months or something that, that yeah. was reported over the weekend. Yeah. Um, but then you look at, you know, what's happened on the other side. Um, you know, we're seeing stocks in China, stocks in Hong Kong, you know, rallying um, quite significantly. And, you know, this doesn't smell of, of an economy that's potentially going to be shut down again. Is this officials? We heard about officials propping up the stock market potentially into the into the party congress. Is this more smoothing being done by officials or is this the market generally buying into China because it's got this bone about COVID easing? So there's a lot there's a lot of, you know, stuff going on um, and it can be hard to decipher. Um, you throw this into the mix of everything we've been talking about, central banks, US data, everything else going on in the world. And, you know, when you get a moment when there's lots of influences, different global influences, it can be hard to, to get a handle on what's happening um, in markets. You know, look at this morning. I was I was sitting down. Cable was trading under 113. Um, you go and make a cup of tea and it's up above 114. Um, you know, unbelievable, really, what's going on. But this is markets for you. Um, and we just got to make the most of it. And if you're not sure what's happening in the middle, you stick to the edges. You look at the ranges. Are we breaking anywhere new or are we just walking in old ground? And if we're walking old ground, then you rely on the ranges and you only look to see if something's changed if those ranges start breaking. Um, so taking the UK into consideration, um, the it looks like the complete trust 180 is happening um, from fiscal spending, increased borrowing, uh, tax cuts. We've gone completely the other way. Um, and now we're slowing spending and looking at tax rises to the tune of some 40 to 65 billion. You know, this is austerity mark two, uh, apparently. And, you know, some in the market are liking this to the to the rally in the pound. I mean, I don't know. I've, I've never known the pound to go up on taxes going up and a lack of spending or reduction in spending especially when you're potentially heading into a recession. That is the time you want the, to see the opposite happening. Um, and so from an investor standpoint, I can't see in any way why um, that sort of news is positive for the pound. But as we say, there's far more things to, to look at at the moment. China headlines are ruling the roost, um, all these rumours, um, because we see metals up, we're seeing oil up, we're seeing risk up generally. So... It's a bit of a mess at the moment, um, but let's switch over to the, the Fed quickly just to see here some of the uh, members speaking after the FOMC. Um, Fed's Evans said that it makes sense to shift to smaller hikes. Kashkari said that the jobs report show more hikes are needed. Um, Fed's Collins said that the Fed needs to um, focus or shift focus from the size of hikes to the ultimate destination for rates. Uh, that's an important point we've been making for a while now. Uh, Barkin said he's unsure of what move uh, will happen in December, needs to watch more data. Um, but he said it could be a potentially higher um, end point for rates, even if hikes are slower. So again, reinforcing that rates may need to be higher for longer, even if they're slower getting there. Um, and the rates could end up above 5%, although it's not a, a base case. Um, looking back at the uh, data on Friday, uh, let me, oh, I'm not there. Where am I? Ooh, Friday the 4th. Right, so we had two sets of jobs reports out. Um, start with the NFP, it was pretty strong. Um, you know, the number 261K well above expectations um, and but we saw a bit of a rise in the unemployment rate um, up two pips on last month some of that can be put down um, to the participation rate as well making it doubly bad because the participation rate dropped which normally can take the unemployment rate down so this was a bit of a double whammy there and I think the market jumped on that side of things in the jobs report saying that well unemployment rate was up 
even with the participation rate coming down. Um, is that a signal that the jobs market is starting to turn? Um, you wouldn't know it based on the uh, the headline NFP, but you know the dollar reacted, uh, it bounced, and then it just completely reversed and went the other way. Um, so you know, very messy price action we saw there. Over in Canada, an absolutely bonza uh, employment report up 108k. Um, with full-time employment up 119,000. Very surprising number there. Um, although the unemployment rate stayed level, again, that participation rate having a lot to do with that uh, there as well. But a very strong number there. Um, what did you make of the, the data, Kay? Yeah, um, the thing is, um, so in, in, the US, uh, in the US report, um, the weakness, as you were saying, has been shown in the unemployment rate. And it seems like the the number of unemployed is going up, despite uh, we, are, we are seeing those uh, those uh, uh, NFP still still going up. So there's there's all sorts of articles out uh, saying that there's a gap in what's uh, what's the non-farm payroll showing in the real uh, and the real employment in the in the economy. So um, I think that may have uh, had to do with uh, the employment rate uh, then rising um, and. Uh, uh, despite a, a higher NFP and the market uh, took that in its stride. And then also, um, I think uh, technically it was uh, was a bit, the dollar was, uh, was on levels that uh, the market uh, was looking at. And then again, uh, something that we have seen, that we've seen continuation of this morning, uh, despite the Chinese uh, comments, is that uh, I, I think they're, they're once that report was over, people started to um, hedge, hedge positions or uh, adjust positions uh, already into the midterms. And then the Canadian one, it seems the biggest part comes from the uh, migrants um, part of it. So the uh, they have been uh, they have seen a lot of uh, a lot of uh, um, jobs created on on that side, but. Uh, it's a really, really, really good support because you uh, report because you got uh, unemployment rate uh, sticky, participation rate going up, and then uh, and a big change in uh, full full time uh, employment, which is uh, which is normally uh, an, an extremely good cocktail. And uh, we saw, albeit being uh, being a yo yo, uh, we saw Dollar Canada uh, come down sharply. The one thing that I was a bit surprised about was uh, the Euro Canada. Why? Why this is uh, went down like 60, 70 pips and then reversed for 200. And I'm a, I'm a little bit uh, perplexed about it because I had um, <clears throat> I was short uh, some Euro Canada went well for a while and then uh, it uh, completely turned around. Um, yeah, so that one is a bit uh, is a bit of a question mark to me. But um, yeah, I, I, I guess it's. More got to do again with uh, the, the the stuff that I'm um, regularly talking about. That uh, the market seems to be trading the America's block uh, versus the uh, the rest of uh, of the world, and we are seeing as well the Euro Max went up uh, one and one and a half percent from uh, from the lows, uh, and and uh, Euro Canada did uh, the similar thing. So. Um, the dollars and the American uh, uh, block currencies uh, seems to be uh, walking together. Um, Besides their own uh, particularities in the middle, so dollar cad lower, dollar max is still lower. Um, but uh, yeah. versus the rest of the world, they they, they are not uh, um, going up much. And yeah, I guess it's maybe a week for look, watching the crosses more than the majors. Yeah, um, it looks like it, right? Um, or don't don't uh, don't look at the crosses and let those uh, those live their own lives. Um, and and back on what you were saying in regards to the sterling, um, I think it's got a lot to do with mechanics. And you're saying like I don't understand investors buying sterling uh, when uh, you're going to austerity in a in a high inflation or um, fragile economy. But I think it's just uh, the opposite of what we've seen uh, with trust. Uh, it's it's a question of uh, confidence in the government's handling of uh, of a certain situation um and and again i'm not sure it's it's going to last but the uh, but i understand the mechanics of, of what happened in the sterling is yeah, that yeah. Uh, the the fear of of a blowing up market and and bank of england completely losing control um of anything 
um, with with Truss and uh, and her uh, uh, chancellor's uh, package, um, and now it's been uh, completely reversed. So the the investor says, well, if you if you assume that the sterling is going to fall apart with um, what Truss and uh, her buddy were doing, um, now we have to assume that uh, they are going to control the government's finances, less borrowing, less uh, risk of the market uh, blowing up. And uh, so we need to buy back sterling. And, and I think that's the mechanics of what we have seen today. Agree or disagree is another thing, right? I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm also quite uh, uh, reluctant to, to follow this move. Um, not so, the cable is a difficult, difficult one into the midterms, right? Uh, because I'm, Got a little, I'm, I'm a little afraid of what's going to happen to the dollar um, over the midterms. But um, as far as stuff like euro sterling is con concerned, for instance, I'm uh, I'm trying to 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 catch a knife um, right now, actually, and yeah. try to 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 buy the low 87 and and see what's going on. Because uh, as what what I was saying as well in the um, in the chat rooms is that. I understand the dollar the dollar moves into the midterms, but then why the euro sterling went 70 points lower or 80 points lower? Um, there must be some sterling element in it, right? Um, no, not only the, the the dollar going weaker um, uh, in uh, for what the, the 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 cable or the sterling as a currency is concerned. So, and that's the bit I think which has to do with uh, the austerity. But um, as you say. In the current situation, um, austerity should not be the uh, right thing to do for the street economy. So I I reckon that we may see a bit of a reversal in the sterling through some instrument. And and, and cable could be one, but uh, I'm more looking at euro sterling right now. Yeah, well, I think um, you know if the, if the last you know particularly you know five six years are shown as everything anything it's that uh, the usual things you you the rules of thumb that we all know about completely go out the window at some point anyway so uh, there are just times when you can do nothing but throw your hands in the, up in the air and say i have no idea what's going on um, you know we all like to try and get into the nitty-gritty find out what's driving a particular price sometimes if you've been in the markets as long as we have you uh, you just don't have an idea i think we're in one of those times now don't you reckon Kay? Well, I, I, I know I, I was even trying to, I, and I was searching. Did I miss something on the on the M and A side? Uh, is there some cross border M and A that somebody somebody needs uh, needs sterling to 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 buy a company or so? But I haven't seen anything at all. So I put it down to the mechanics of of what investors or money managers um, look at, because a lot of it now is model driven, right? And and um, some of the models uh, may have turned and say like, oh, right, this is uh, um, less spending, less, uh, uh, more money in the coffers compared to what Trust was trying to do. And uh, so we, we have to reverse position in the sterling. And I reckon that is what we are seeing now. Is it going to last? I'm a little in doubt, but uh, um, let's see what happens, right? I mean, uh, yeah. we, can all be, we can all be trying to find something and, and then be completely wrong or the market taking it much further than uh, than we think because they have to um but yeah uh, and i'm i'm also in the camp of saying it might not last um yeah exactly because of the underlying situation um right now <laughs> yeah um well i'm gonna have a look at uh, a couple of pairs and then uh, i shall let uh, k uh loose uh, on his charts um, dollar cad was one I was, I was trading on Friday um, without success. Just playing off this this 135 level. Um, just trying some small longs into that. Got stopped out on the other side. Um, I I refrained from going with a, a break short, so reversing the trade into a short because it just didn't feel like the driver was. It didn't feel like it was going to blow through. Um, that's been the case. You know, we've got down to you know pretty much the low 70s. Um, before bouncing back above so it's 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 having one of these times where the market doesn't know what to do around here you know we, we're moving below we're holding below getting back above holding above now we're back below again holding below but really not cementing the move lower 
um, you know, down to the mid 60s there, 34, 60s. So it's not a decisive break. Um, and I will. Uh, we've lost you there, Ryan. We don't hear what you're saying. Ryan's microphone is gone. Ryan? Okay. Right. I'm. Uh, I'm. I'll, I'm going to um, to take over here. I'm going to um, let me um, switch around a few. Um, I'm, I'm. Whoops. Let me just switch around a couple of screens here, and I'll be with you guys um, until Ryan is back. So Ryan was on the Dollar Canada. Let me just um, pull up that Dollar Canada the way I was looking at it. Um, okay, so so Ryan was telling about Canada after the after the report. We saw a, a pretty sharp drop um, on uh, on Friday, uh, ramping through this. The, the way I'm looking at it is this and this, and there's another one here which is a head and shoulder that's been uh, um, identified already a few times uh, in our room as well and uh, we are uh, we're back below uh, the neckline here so the 135 is going to be a pivot uh, which we are which we're turning around and hello, then, hello. yeah uh, we can hear you again ryan um, oh yes sorry about that. Um, I don't know what yeah should i continue yeah yeah crack on mate yeah crack on okay um all right so this is the one um i think the the 135 is a bit the, the, the pivot area where we are going to turn around here, as I was saying, uh, the, the neckline. But then, um, barring this, this big spike here above, we seem to be back into, uh, into a bit of a downward channel. Could still be a, could still be a, a flag, but um, we've also seen that a bit of a longer term line is being tested now around 134.70. And uh, that's another one. It's, it could be just our confirmation, you know, 134.70. If it goes and it holds below the confirmation that this that this uh, bottom is uh, is now um, giving way, and uh, we may be uh, trading back to mid uh, 133s. Keep uh, keep an eye on that one. I just want to touch on um, on what's happening in uh, in China, right? Um, to me. At least technically, we're still in a, firmly in a, in an upward trend. We went to to go and test it, try to go a little bit below, but we couldn't um, we couldn't break the uh, the prior low around seven sixteen and a half, uh, which is a, a nice uh, point of measure. And we are we're back into uh, into this uh, upwards uh, upward channel. And um, so, what I also think is that. We've been trying to figure out what's happening there, and people—it's—it's um, it's all guesswork, right? Uh, what, what's happening in China? But there is there's no smoke without fire, still still somewhere. Um, but I think they may be just sending out messages, testing the waters, and by doing so, propping up their stock markets, getting pressure off the Chinese yuan. And then coming back with their official message uh, in between brackets, and and uh, which is, oh no, we are not uh, changing uh, anything yet. But then, who who knows? In by by the end of the week, we might have uh, another. If if China uh, weakens again, we might have another few comments to um, to, uh, to to put the the CNH a bit stronger again to underpin their um, their um, stock markets. So I I think there's a bit of uh, there's a bit of gaming going on there as well, um, because they know that if they just continue their um, money injections, their support for the economy, all the while keeping the zero COVID, uh, the, the market is really going to uh, to test them uh, and 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 probably sell uh, a lot of their uh, of their assets. So uh, I think there's a bit of gaming going on there as well. Um, just uh, my personal opinion. Um, then moving on to uh, what's happening in the yen. Um, dollar yen is, is is trying, trying, trying. We could we could actually put a bit of a bit of a, a double line here, um, right here. 
double it's trying to stay in in the in the um up, upward uh, channel it is succeeding for the moment but at the same time it's uh, now trapped in uh, inside a small um, triangle and it's going to look a bit messy but um, keep look at this on the four hour um the four hour cloud what's been happening of late is we go we test it and we fail and then we drop below we retest it and we fail then we go and test the high again and we fail and this morning we did exactly the same we just tested the underside around 147.55 and uh, we're failing again so um is it managed i'm i'm not sure okay to, today the dollar really uh, got a got a hammering so this it's logic that we are uh, that we are uh, retesting the lows here but so keep an eye on 145 35 40 one for uh, 146 sorry 35 40 146 15 and this one which has been tested a few times um but to me is is going to be uh, the, the real barometer to see if we uh, and that's now around 145.60 um, uh, to see if we we if we get a close below there may be uh, more issues in uh, in dollar yen and I'm not excluding the midterms to um, to give it a serious test again uh, in the US so that's a level level that I'm going to watch together with the uh, what I've been already saying the 144.80. Um, so this is a zone here where uh, we should be really, really, really paying close attention to what's happening in the in the, in the dollar yen. Um, on uh, other stuff, sterling. All right, um, we have a bit of a trend line here, which uh, has been retested together with the uh, 20, 23.6 of the latest uh, move, and that's all happening around 114.70. Tagged it this uh, morning. We're still not far away. Um, I'm going to keep an eye on what's happening for the for a starter around 114. The figure, and then uh, lower 113s again around 113 and a quarter 2025. If we in case we get uh, we get rejections around here, um, but I am really we should allow for a move back into the 115s if. Uh, if the uh, the midterms um, are uh, going to put further pressure on the dollar, the big one is still around here for me. Uh, well, this trend line is now coming lower, but um, so 116.40, 116.70 is going to be uh, an important level, and I'm still watching as well 117.60. So basically, every like hundred. 100 115 points uh, above there should be some uh, some activity to monitor the sterling as i was saying i'm a little in doubt um that we are going to see long lasting moves on the sterling but for the time being we have to uh, we have to admit that uh, sterling is uh, is the strongest of um, of the currencies and we've seen again into the top of the hour we've seen again some uh, sterling buying going on and euro sterling is trading lower again um on the euro sterling same thing here, um, bit of a trend line uh, rejection uh, up at 87.85.90. Then we have like the mid mid of the mid of the range 87.40. It all it all gave way very very easily this morning, and now we're already looking at the next one, which is at uh, 87. The figure, um, as I said, I'm trying to catch, but I'm keeping it really small and uh, and and uh, amounts and risk are really really tight because I'm I'm a bit unsure about what's going on here but I'm I am trying to catch a knife in front of this uh, 87 the figure on uh, on the euro sterling um other stuff Aussie um Aussie that's not the Aussie there's a dollar cat I spoke about it's the the other one yeah Aussie dollar um Bit of a bit of a resistance here, trend line resistance around uh, 64 three quarters. Tagged it this morning. I'm keeping an eye on that one. The bigger one, of course, being still 65 20 30 um, 2025 uh, on top. If we if we're getting there, um, I wouldn't exclude if we get through this uh, 64 three quarters again. Perhaps this afternoon when New York uh, walks in, um, that uh, that we see a test of this 65 20 again. But 
If it caps here, um, we, we could see a move back into the mid uh, zone, which is going to take us around uh, the low 64s again, from where we took off uh, basically um, this morning. Um, Kiwi, Kiwi still, you know, quite constructive, and we are nearly back to um, the, uh, the Wednesday's uh, spike high. Um, we're trading above 59 again. Kiwi has been really, really constructive along this uh, along this uh, broken uh, broken channel, um, and it's it's one that we really should uh, should uh, pay attention to. It's now around 85.60, another fib around 85.70. So this 80, 80, 58, sorry, 58.60.70 should really be uh, be supportive um, on uh, on the Kiwi dollar if ever we get a uh, retest. Um, for the start of the week, I think this is enough for me. Um, what do you guys think about oil? Can COP27 affect the, the movement in the short term? Uh, well, for the time being, it's there's a bit of um, gaming going on between uh, what's happening between the OPEC uh, community and the rest of the world. The rest of the world is trying to put uh, pressure on uh, on the OPEC. Um, I've even seen a, what is it, a German lawyer or so trying, to, um, trying to, to bring a case to justice um, in regards to, to OPEC um, because of uh, cartel forming. And um, uh, it would be a first in history. Uh, there's, there's every chance that it doesn't make it to court, but uh, it's, it's a bit of a first. So... COP27, I'm a bit unsure about what they can do about the oil price right here and now, because they are talking about stuff which should be happening in 2030 and beyond, right? Um, um, I'm not sure if, if they have a, if COP27 can have a, a direct impact on, uh, on oil prices. Um, but um, we are talking in the room about uh, the uh, WTI. Um, it, there's a bit of resistance here, right? Between, uh, between 93, 93 and a half. And then I can see some more um, creeping in um, above 95, uh, up to 96. Um, but uh, yeah, for the time being, it's um, it's big. OPEC is uh, still keeping uh, control of it. And I reckon the uh, the SPR, uh, where where the US uh, was trying to buy oil uh, below below 80, over 70, uh, has put some uh, speculators um, in the hot seat again and, uh, and and taking it up here for the time being the winter is not is is relatively mild but uh, yet we are seeing uh, reserves needing to be replenished and uh, and uh, keeping this uh, this bit uh, short um, maybe a bit resistance again coming in here as we can see been a bit of this uh, upward channel and that uh, resistance comes in uh, again around 93 93 and a half keep an eye on uh, on, on on that level i i would say um ryan are you there yeah yeah i'm, I'm here mate can you hear me all right yeah i can hear you um i'm just going to have a last uh, last look at the metals um oil back um uh, gold sorry back into this uh 77 89 zone but it's broken it's broken a bit of a trend line. Uh, we could argue it's uh, banging its head another against another one, which is uh, shorter term, this one. And uh, that again is around 1680. It's it's all gonna happen in the 1680, 1690 zone if it has to go. Um, same on the, on the silver, we've broken uh, through this here, but then uh, as we've seen in the past, there's uh, there's always been resistance around 21. Okay, we had a spike up to 2120, but um, and it's the, the, the rest is uh, the trend line is there as well now. 21, 21, 20 is, is where it really plays ball or not for me. And I have a, a, a small observation to make um, into the midterms. Um, just a personal feeling is that if we get a um, split government and if we get um, the Republicans going to block everything that Biden's going to, going to try, despite what may happen to the dollar, it may be a, it may be having a lower dollar effect, so silver and gold trying higher levels. But 
if if uh, if they block everything that that Biden tries to do to stimulate uh, the economy, put uh, his uh, famous um, uh, what is it uh, construction and uh, infrastructure plans into place, and that got all shot down. I see a little reason for this one to uh, to really take off uh, uh, a lot further. So I'm cautioning a little bit um, the moves that may come. I'm still longer term long. I did add on on the twenty break the the other day, but all my add-ons um, <clears throat> I've I've let them go right now, and I'm going to be very cautious into the midterms. And with that, Mr. Ryan, over to you. Thank you very much, mate. Um, yeah, just on the uh, the cop stuff. Um, I, yeah, I think any headlines we get that move energy markets are going to be short lived. Um, we you know we're already hearing a lot of. Uh, guff and and you know strong rhetoric you know just as, as we're here on the flow show um you know un general secretary Guterres has said we in the fight of our lives and we are losing um so i think at most what we might get is maybe some stronger comments maybe bringing forward targets or working harder towards targets um you know reducing fossil fuel uses and everything that might have a, a minor negative effect but then what happens is everyone's going to leave the COP27, uh, come back home and they're in the middle of winter with uh, Russian gas supply problems and trying to find fuel elsewhere and everything else. So it's all going to go back to uh, going to get forgotten about five minutes after the event. Um, so any any short term moves like that, I think uh, you may want to be looking at for a potential fade. Um, I won't go back over too much of what Kay said, but I did want to highlight a couple of things. Um, yeah, the Aussie dollar still creeping up, still needs to break this 60, uh, mine is a 65, 22, 39, if you want to be uh, precise, zone there. Um, I am watching this level for to add to my longs. I'm long um, 64, 74 down to 61.99. Um, so I am looking for uh, a break here to potentially add to uh, the longs. This, this will be a potential range break if we move above that 65 40 zone um, and that could kick us on um, I'm completely in agreement with what Kay was saying about dollar CAD um, and the 35 zone um, I don't know how much uh, you heard from me before I cut out I was trying longs off the level on Friday got uh, stopped out didn't look like it was breaking down though so I didn't go with a reverse trade um, I still feel it's a bit in the mix at the moment it's not really ready to, to break lower but if we get a sustained period of time holding this uh, 35 handle that might be the signal to, to potentially try shorts um dollar yeah uh, dollar yen um i'm still short a little bit maybe being a bit too greedy waiting for 149s to add to the position i was a bit uh i wouldn't say shaken last week after power turning hawkish but i was a bit more cautious um, in my dollar bearish view, I think the market partially is calling a bit of bluff on Powell uh, and that hawkish slant. So I'm happy to stay short this one in particular for the longer term. Um, if I'm not going to get anything up in the 149s, 150s, I'm maybe going to look more closely at if we get a break of this 145 area um, to add to my shorts and, and build up a bit more um, of a position there. Um, and lastly, just to reflect, 1K was looking at gold. Um, still long on this uh, bounce off the 50 fib down here. Yeah, we're in the zone 75, 85, 76, whatever you want to call it. People have different numbers for this one. Um, again, I might look to, to try a break attempt if we get through it. Uh, but it's a bit like dollar CAD. It's not looking like it wants to really push off. It's done a lot already, you know, 50 odd, 55 bucks, 60 bucks since Friday, which is a big move in itself. Um, and that the fact that we, you know, found a bit of a top, then we can't quite hit that same top again, uh, tends to show me that perhaps there's a bit of fatigue in here. Um, can it hold this level? If it holds this level, then we we may well get a push outside, maybe up to towards 1700s. Um, but if we can't break this recent high um, pretty quickly from Friday, um, then maybe we're going to slip right back into the range again. Um, so that's my thoughts on gold. Um, I think we'll call it a day there today, unless uh, any of you guys and girls got anything you want to add to that. Um, mm -hmm. Brand is so if the gold breaks the trend, would that make USD go down? I think 
gold is more reflective of what the dollar's doing rather than the other way around at the moment. Mm. Um, it, it has been ranging um, over the last few weeks. Um, all the while we've come through central bank meetings, data, all that sort of thing. So it doesn't, the gold chart doesn't necessarily tell me that, you know, we're moving really based on the fundamentals. It's being pulled and pulled, pushed around by other forces. Um, so until something changes there, um, and if China is going to head to COVID easing and, and the market's got that bone in its mouth, that is going to be a uh, support for the metals, commodities, that sort of thing. That'll be another driver why we see gold higher. Um, but if you had to ask me, I see more reasons for gold going up than going down right now. Um, but unless we break out some of these ranges, um, you know, we, we're not doing anything. So that's that's what you need to look for. And on that yeah. note, we just say, yeah, go on, mate. Um, yeah, I, I would like to uh, put our audience uh, to contribution tomorrow for the U.S. midterms. Uh, we'd like to hear from uh, you guys what uh, what you think about the outcome for one and what it means for markets on uh, and more as more specifically because we are all traders, so um, we are going to try to trade an outcome of the midterm. So uh, tomorrow in uh, in our chat here, let us know what you guys are looking at. What uh, what what your um, um, trading uh, opportunities may look like uh, uh, over the midterms? Yeah, yeah. And join us uh, on the fly, on the face show because I'm going to bug Dale and uh, Blake about it all. So mm. they have to say about it. <laughs> I'm sure they're really looking forward to it. <laughs> okay, boys and girls, thank you very much for coming to good the Flow Show. Thanks, Kay, and uh, we shall see you all bright and breezy tomorrow. Have a good one. Hey traders, this is Blake Morrow with Forex Analytics. Thanks for stopping by our YouTube channel. Don't forget to like these videos, share them, and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any of the content that we provide here for free. Thanks for stopping by. I'll see you in the next video.